Hi everyone, this is Catapo, and I've been on a bit of a break from poker lately, but I'm about to show you some action at the 360s versus S2 Good. He's a regular, and while I haven't played him in the last few months, I remember him being quite solid and uh, overall a pretty good player. I think he's one of uh, J Hub's horses. Okay, so I know the game's probably changed since I last played, but I will definitely try to adapt to all the changes as quickly as possible, and I still think my fundamental play should be all right. I don't know that I would have an edge versus this guy, but it should still be a pretty interesting game regardless. Here, if I bet, I might be able to just fold out some equity share from, let's say, like, queen nine or so, but uh, overall I'm not really gaining too much, so with two overs and almost certainly the best hand, when he doesn't bet the turn, I feel like I should just check in both cases. Okay, now when he does not bet here, I kind of think he might have a three, because I did give him a few chances to bluff still. I guess he just had zero showdown value and expected me to only check back maybe some bottom pair or other type of showdown value, like I did have. You know, I had the weakest end of my showdown value. And so, I probably would have folded there, unless I had some good read. And even then, it's just a pretty crappy hand to call with. One of the benefits, though, is that a lot of the hands that could hit there would be some kind of gut shot, so I'd be a little bit more tempted to call because those normally bet the turn. Anyway, here, two overs, king high. Yeah, and uh, of course some backdoor potential, though not the best. The call is a bit loose. I think it could possibly be a leak, but without too much information on him, I still think it's okay. Deuce three off, versus a regular, I don't really want to play such garbage. If I knew he was some sort of fit and fold fish, uh, then yeah, it becomes a much more attractive option. Nine deuce off is also just a little bit too weak for me. And yes, you can limp it, but again, you're just hoping that they're the type to play fit and fold to your limp stabs. Overall, you just don't hit almost at all of that hand in a way that you could actually get the showdown, of course, because, yeah, you might hit a deuce or whatever, but uh, if he puts any pressure, you're immediately in a terrible spot. Okay, and we're now quite a bit shallower. It's like around 15 big blinds or so. And he checks back. Um... Sometimes they could check to trap in this spot uh, because, yes, I don't normally have an ace, uh, this kind of depth, but uh, queens I think should still be betting most of the time unless they have a really bad kicker like mine. And uh, five could definitely bet the turn and check, so I will obviously never fold the turn, but uh, here with uh, ace pairing, Chances of him having a queen are a lot higher, and if you wanted to bluff, this is the perfect spot to bluff. Uh, as uh, the flop goes, I mean, not on the river. So if he had total air, I feel like he would bet here on the flop quite a lot. And uh, also, if he has a queen, he's beating me. So that leaves a lot of showdown value, and most of that showdown value, if it's just like a, a pocket threes or whatever, would not be betting there. Um, I suppose in the rare chances that he has a pocket pair like sevens, he could definitely consider a bet, but I think that he wouldn't necessarily go such a large size. It definitely seemed like he'd have just a fairly good queen there or an ace or something like that. Like, if I had queen nine, I would definitely call. Queen eight, I would call. Queen seven, I would probably call but not 100 percent sure i mean it's just at the point where i feel like a lot of people would be just value owning you there and i do have poker tracker i just uh have some stats from 
a long time ago, so I don't think they're very reliable, and I don't have a large sample anyway. I would maybe even limp this sometimes. I just don't know how he plays. But yeah, uh, in spots before, sometimes you just have to make a tough fold. In terms of game theory, you're probably forced to call there with a queen because you will have a range skewed towards either bottom pair or a queen and almost never an ace or you know strong pocket pair, that kind of thing. So yeah, objectively, yeah, you probably would need to call, but uh, in terms of how players actually treat these spots, I just don't think that I'm good enough there. So I'm curious what he had, and maybe he'll tell me later, but unlikely. Here I will, of course, bet. And I think maybe I went a little bit too big, but it's not too bad. I'm thinking he can have definitely some two pairs there, and you know, of course just one pair that is curious. So a lot of those are in a tough spot. And let's look at the Nash charts just briefly. Have him right here. Boop. All right. Um, yeah, so King-5 off, according to Nash, is a call at 10.2 big blinds if he's playing correctly. Uh, yeah, I think for a lot of players, you can call a bit wider because they'll open shove too wide and maybe uh, limp some hands that are really strong. But yeah, I think it's just a very borderline there. You could probably go either way. Okay. I'm going to have a limping range, uh, really shallow stacks, just because I do still have position and I will have some traps, so he can't simply decide to shove every time. Okay, here I think he would try to barrel most of the time, if I do call, because he won't think like, oh yeah, he has a 10 or a 4, no, and most likely I don't. And yeah, I could have an ace, uh, though I think again, he doesn't doesn't consider that a very high possibility. Uh, so let's see. I mean, if I bet here, we're splitting if he has a four. So I'm still hoping he could be bluffing one more time. And he won't have an ace, he could have a 10, so. I will bet here just because there's no real risk. If he had sixes or whatever, he would basically always be betting the turn. Ace is a little bit discounted, so he'd be getting value most of the time. Okay, so here I'm trying to decide how much he limb traps. And if it's not a lot, I would shove, but this play's all right, so I figure it's okay to check. Man, this is one of the absolute worst flops that I still feel obligated to continue with. Because I do have the gut shot, overcard, I have a pair, but it is terrible, and he would know that a lot of the hands I'd check back would have decent playability. So, yeah. It's a spot where he would most likely check back if he just had random showdown value or uh, or just trash or whatever. But uh, when he bets, it's normally quite a stronger range or a draw he's going to get in with. And yes, I will go with this. The stack sizes are just really shallow right now. So, so far I haven't seen anything too remarkable in either way. This is a call just because I'm getting two to one, essentially. Uh, yeah, so it's hard to really think about uh, how I would be exploiting him if he's even playing an exploitable style, though he probably would be most people are. Oh, that's weird. He's normally the type of player that is willing to 
play a few. Okay, so I guess I'll stop it at 10 minutes. Maybe I'll get another game, just sit him at another game. Okay, we can play a 600. I mean, some players are playing multiple sides. He's one of them that would likely be playing some other sides right now. I actually play multiple sides as well if I do play normally. Uh, but it's not my fault. If he's busy and has a lot of tables, then it's his obligation to unregister and make sure that he's not going to get overloaded. So, no, I don't feel it's a problem at all that uh, I'm sending him here and he hasn't even written anything in chat. So, I don't know if it's because he's busy or he just doesn't want to play me or whatever. But uh, it's certainly not my issue. Well, on the other hand, that I'd consider limping sometimes if he's aggressive enough. But I mostly start to limp when the stacks get quite a bit shallower. So the risk uh, of uh, just losing my open is significantly higher relative to my stack. So. This I would limp, let's say, uh, 17 big blinds or whatever, but I'd be a bit more likely to min-raise uh, when I'm quite deep for super turbos. And I'll have one-third pot size bets on some textures. This is one of them. It's not really as dry as maybe some others that I like to do it on, but it's still okay. Like, you either connect or you don't, essentially, and there aren't quite a lot of floats. Like, if you have queen four there, you're just not continuing. It's simple. I'll try to get you guys at least like um, 20 minutes though. So we'll see. All right. Uh, I haven't been that aggressive versus him yet. I'm mostly feeling him out, but I would like to check raise some boards as well. Okay, 8 through side fold, 8 3, I would still open. And I think the initiative from min raising is generally worth it unless you're facing a very aggressive player. So this is more connected than the other one. See, like you have 6 8, uh, 7 8, all, all kinds of uh, other back doors. So I bet a little bit bigger, you see half pot. And 8 3 seems like trash on that flop, and it Kind of is, but on the other hand, you do have backdoor potential for two different straight draws. Sorry about my cat. I don't know what's gone in her. Siamese cats tend to be very talkative. Okay, check back. He can hit the ace quite a bit, and I think he wanted to bluff it. Kitty, shut up. Uh, and uh, he checks, so... This really waits his range for his uh, bottom pair, middle pair, maybe sevens, eight, eights possibly, but uh, you know, like he would, he would unlikely, he'd be unlikely to have eights when uh, you see an eight there. But anyway, nines I think would almost always bet there. Okay, so two thirds, pot, pretty normal. Must have had a six or something like that. I feel like I could have gotten a bit more, but on the other hand, it's also easy to get value on if a player is uh, balanced in that spot. Just because, again, like your range is composed of relatively few aces compared to theirs, and uh, and they can check and induce there if they want with an ace, and they can also just have other strong hands. You just are at a position, your range is not great, so you can get bluffed off just through the fact that they're range strength is a lot higher even if objectively in that spot it seems all right to bet i feel you're getting exploited kind of easily and it makes you trickier too to be able to check back some reasonably strong hands it means that they can't just value bet all the time so he he limps that i didn't actually think he'd limp that mm, it's okay uh i guess i'm more inclined to limp hands that play even better overall and of the aces that I'd want to limp uh, yeah, and that it's a possibility at least it's suited but I don't see a reason for him to be limping when I haven't been 3-betting him almost at all so far 
I just actually didn't have the hands to really do it. 